Newt News is brought to you in part by The Village Bank. Your village, your bank. As of April 28th, Newton has a total of 556 confirmed COVID-19 cases. And according to the city's website, there are 71 COVID-19 related deaths in Newton as of April 28th. In Massachusetts, there are 1,963 new cases reported, bringing the total of confirmed cases to 60,265, with 6% currently hospitalized as of April 29th, 2020. The total number of deaths in Massachusetts is now at 3,405. Governor Baker has extended the non-essential business closures by two weeks to end on Monday, May 18th. There is a 17-member reopening advisory board with three public health officials, three municipal officials, and 11 leaders from the business community who will put together a phased reopening report due by May 18th. This week, Mayor Fuller announced that 100 part-time city employees will be furloughed and put on standby status effective April 20th. This will allow furloughed employees to apply for unemployment compensation. Updates will be given to those employees as to the continuation of their standby status no later than June 14th, 2020. I'm Cindy Cream, your Massachusetts State Senator. I'm also the Majority Leader of the Senate. And I have been working with my colleagues all across the state to pass laws to make life a little bit easier during this time of COVID-19. It has been difficult for all of us, and I am so sad about the people we have lost to the virus. I'm sad about what has occurred in our skilled nursing homes, in our assisted living, in our congregate living. My hope is that now that we have more tests and more reporting, we can see what happened and do better as we go forward. But I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to our first responders. Every time I go to the grocery store, I say thank you to the person at the checkout, the letter carrier that delivers our mail, the firefighters, the police, the ambulance workers, all of our first responders, the delivery people, they have put their life on the line and they have done the best for all of us, even though many of them have become sick. And so I think it's important to recognize what they've done and say thank you. And to our nurses and doctors and healthcare workers, these are difficult times and they have been willing to put themselves in a second to make our lives better. The things that we have been working upon are very varied. We waived the one week waiting period for unemployment insurance. We prepared a moratorium on eviction of foreclosure. We did a bill which would give healthcare workers additional liability coverage. We allowed municipalities to delay their taxes and we allowed individuals to not pay their federal or state taxes until July 15th. We waive the MCAS requirement so that you can graduate even if you haven't taken the MCAS. And we allowed restaurants to sell beer and wine, and now many restaurants are selling food. And best of all, I think, is my bill that I just filed that would allow mail-in voting. We should not be in a position where we have to worry about our health or worry about whether we do what we're democratically required to do and we hope to do, and that's vote. And my bill would allow you to vote by mail. It would also allow early voting. For those that want to come to in to vote, it would be for the September 1st primary and for the November election. If you want to come in early for a week ahead, you can do that. But if you want to vote by sending your ballot in, you can do that also. This and other bills such as this are going to be heard by the election committee. So stay tuned. We're going to have some good answers. But as we go forward, and we will go forward, while the governor delayed the potential for opening this week, he did recognize the need to look to the future. 
He had set up a committee and I'm going to be chairing a committee in the Senate, which will look at how we can function, whether it's remotely or by being in the Senate and social distancing, how we are going to slowly get back to where we need to be. But let's remember, this is going to be a different world for a while. Get used to the mass and get used to social distancing. But let's think of the good things that happened. I see people sitting out on their lawn, entertaining friends six feet apart. They're not rushing around. They're having a little quieter life. We may not be going to the movies right away. We may not be going to sports activities, but we will start resuming our lives. It's very important. It's important for us. It's important for the economy. But during this time, I want you to know that my office is open for business, you might say. We're answering our phones, we're working remotely, and many of you have been calling us if you have a problem, if you have an issue or question on unemployment, if you have an issue on domestic violence, whatever it is, please call and we'll do the best that we can to help you. So I hope and expect that I will have another opportunity to update you. And maybe at that time, we'll be able to talk about what our future is looking to us. But at this point, please be safe, wear your mask. And there are many good places here that you can get a mask. Even places are making masks. Wear your mask, social distance, and stay healthy. Thank you. This week, we spoke with chair of the fundraising committee for the Newton COVID-19 Care Fund, Rob Gifford, on how it works and who can apply for financial help. I'm here with Rob Gifford, the chair of the Newton COVID-19 Care Fund, who as of right now has raised over $600,000 with an almost 800 donors. Rob, this is amazing that uh, this fund in such a short time has raised so much. Uh, but before we get into you know the details, can you tell me what it is this new COVID-19 care fund is? Sure, sure. No, happy to. And just to clarify, I'm not chairman of the fund. I'm just chairman of this fundraising. Chairman of the fundraising. So the, so the fund is really, it's a, there are four major groups that came together around forming this fund. And it was really inspired by Mayor Fuller. A little over a month ago, she reached out to us and some other folks. Uh, to look at, at, at raising money for people who are facing financial distress uh, as a result of the pandemic. And, um, you know, it involves the city of Newton. Uh, the United Way is part, of the, is part of the group here that's making this fund work. And, uh, you know, United Way of Mass Bay has both contributed uh, funds and tremendous resources. There are fundraising portal. If you click onto those links and you want to make an application or you want to uh, contribute, it's all under the United Way uh, website, their backbone, if you will. They also work with the, you know, the key group here in Newton, Family Access, which is the group that's actually accepting uh, grant proposals and granting money to individuals in need. So it's really a four-part group. You know, people like me, citizens who are mainly raising money, then you've got the city, then you've got United Way and Family Access. So we're this kind of this coalition of four different uh, groups or organizations, and we've come together to uh, start this fund and raise it and, and now distribute uh, aid as needed. So how did you get involved? Uh, Mayor Mayor Fuller. Yeah, no, no, it's just we got a call from uh, Mayor Fuller. She, you know, gave me and, uh, you know, Claire Sokoloff, my wife, who's also very active uh, in, in Newton, and asked us if we would uh, help out on the fundraising side and just getting the whole thing uh, started. And we, you know, we jumped at the opportunity to help. And this was a little bit over a month ago? Yeah, it was probably the, she, you know, we got the call maybe middle of uh, March and then the, the fund was formally, then we reached out to United Way uh, and they, they put us under their umbrella. So the fund was actually up and running by the 20th of, of I'm sorry, did I say May, I meant March. The fund mm -hmm. was up and running by the 20th of March. So it's a little over a month ago. Yeah, and in that month, as I mentioned earlier, this was, you know, uh, over $600,000 has been raised. Yeah, it's That's astounding, amazing. and over 800 donors. Uh, yeah. You know, just the, and again, some of it initially was the, you know, the, you know, the fundraising team reaching out to, you know, businesses and individuals who, who we knew, uh, who we thought would be generous, and, and everybody was just unbelievably 
uh, uh, generous uh, who we contacted. And then as it got up and running and it got more uh, pub publicity, if you will, through, through efforts of the city and other groups, and it got spread around on Facebook groups and you know, other, other ways, just people from all over were clicking on the, on the website and contributing. Some were giving credit card donations, other checks, others appreciated stock. I mean, they, that's the great thing about being affiliated with the United Way. They, this is what they do. And they had this great backbone as, as kind of the fiscal agent for the fund. So, you know, initially solicited and then just unbelievable amounts of uh, generosity unsolicited, really just coming in through the website every day. So who will this help specifically? Like well, it's really targeted. Oh. Sure, it's, it's targeted to to Newton residents mm -hmm. or people who work in Newton, okay. or people who either have their children in childcare or in schools in Newton, or Newton first responders who are facing childcare uh, issues, right? Because yeah. as we all know, schools out, right? Preschool right. programs are out, and so that that's really the targeted group who you know, are, are really in need, who are below a, a, an income level, who don't have the financial resources, uh, and they're facing immediate uh, expenses that they really can't meet. It could be rent, it could be medical, it could be childcare, uh, uh, you know, could be other regular bills. And they just, um, given the suddenness of the shutdown here and how many people, you know, are facing, you know, these sorts of uh, financial stresses, it's really meant to be there now uh, to help those people make it make it through. Now these funds won't go directly to the recipients, but in fact go towards paying their bills. Is that yeah. So 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 what happens is, and, and as if people go onto the website, uh, you can either donate or you can you can seek help, and then you sign up online. If you're if you're looking for uh, a grant, you sort of fill out an initial you know inquiry that goes to Family Access, which is a wonderful social service agency, which has been, uh, which has worked closely with the United Way and closely with the city for, for a long time. I, they're over a hundred years old in terms of how long they've been in Newton. And uh, one of the many things they do is, is, is helping people with direct uh, uh, grants who are, who are in need. And so the form goes to Family Access, then, they, then there's a kind of an interview process where they assess your need. Uh, and then they, uh, let's say, you know, you can't pay your cell bill, you can't pay your rent, You've got childcare that that you know that you need because schools are out. So you submit to them, you know, the uh, bills that you need to pay, uh, and then Family Access will say yes, this is a this is a a grant that's worthwhile. Uh, we should fund this, and then they will directly fund what whether it's the landlord or the childcare or the medical, uh, uh, the pharmacy or whoever the doctor, whatever it is, uh, they'll direct uh, the cell bill. They'll directly fund those uh, those costs. Will this be a one-time um, experience for them, or can it be ongoing? Do they have to apply every month? Well, you know, we, we're, we're still in the first month, and so right. we'll see, right? Uh, see. But it, it's very clear, you know, and we all get on the phone every Friday morning, the, the four different groups I described, the City United Way, Family Access, and the fundraising group to sort of see how we're doing and what's going on. And clearly, uh, you know, these are month-to-month -month needs, and so, uh, people will be back. We've at this point, we basically set, you know, a limit of 2,500 per individual per family. Mm -hmm. Now, folks aren't asking for that much right away. So I imagine if somebody comes back next month uh, and has the same sort of needs, you know, we would hopefully, or family access would hopefully be able to to, to repeat. Uh, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. And right. Yeah, we're still, we're still waiting. We're still, and, and new applications are coming. I mean, they've gotten well over 200 applications. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the vast majority of those are, 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 are fully qualifying to meet the criteria mm -hmm. and they're processing those and they've sent out, you know, well over a hundred thousand dollars to date with a lot of money to go out in the queue. So, you know, we're just going to have to see how the applications come in and, you know, how much money we have. We have an incredible, you know, start, if you will, uh, with, with $600,000 or over that. Um, and hopefully that will go the distance and, you know, if it doesn't, you know, we may, you know, go back around and, you know, ask some of our more generous donors or all donors if they'd be willing to contribute more, but we'll cross and, that bridge. Right. Hopefully. Um, uh, how can one, I mean, you're still accepting donations, correct? We are. Oh, absolutely. So if you just, uh, 
and I think you mentioned it would be listed. It would be on the website mm -hmm. or, or on your on your uh, program there. If you just click on that website, or if you if you're not there and you can't remember the website, if you just put in your in your Google browser, uh, Newton COVID Care Fund, the first thing that will pop up will be this fund, and it will be under a United Way banner, and then it'll say Newton COVID Care Fund, and uh, there'll be a button to click. It'll describe the fund in in, in detail, like what we're doing and how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. It'll show the list of uh, major business and, and initial supporter donors. Uh, it will have a button to click to give money. And, and if you give, you can do credit card, check, you know, or, you know, from a, some people have donor advised funds or other things. Whatever it is, United Way can accept it. It'll have another button that will take you directly to the application if you need, if you need support. If you need support. Now, how can others help besides just donating? Are there other ways that perhaps businesses or residents can, can help? Um, like, obviously, donating is one, but perhaps volunteering at some point? You know, we've talked about that. The, the volunteering uh, aspect is, is a little tricky right now, given, right. you know, given sort of where we, where we are because of this pandemic. I, th I think if, if folks want to do more than give, the best thing they can do is to send around the, the link Mm -hmm. uh, to their networks. Uh, if they're part of a, a neighborhood listserv or if they've just got a, a circle of, of Newton friends who they email with um, or uh, you know Facebook just to kind of get the word out and and the more people who see it and they see it from a trusted friend uh, they'll be more inclined to give. So I think that's probably in addition to just direct donation uh, that's probably the most you know, valuable th additional thing that somebody can do. Well, this is great, Rob. Um, what a, a feat you've made in, in a month. I mean, well, it's, it's, it really, it's been, you know, we've got, uh, you know, a wonderful team of people on the fundraising side. And then uh, uh, again, between United Way, the, the, the city and, and family access, it's really a, it's a team effort. And it's also just a sign of the uh, amazing generosity in this community you know, that it's, that, that people have been so generous so quickly. It's, yes, it has been amazing how we can all come together. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, that's, that aspect of it's been really, really nice to see. Well, thanks, Rob. We'll check in with you soon and okay. uh, see how it's going. Or if you need okay. more help with donations or spreading the word, uh, we'll certainly help you there. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. All right, thanks, Rob. Okay, take care. This week, Newton News starts its recognition of high school seniors from Newton. You can send in your child's picture to be showcased in Newton's Class of 2020. Each week, we'll add more students through the middle of June. You can email me at jenna at newtv.org to have your child featured. Congratulations to all, and here's this week's list of Newton's Class of 2020. From Newton South High School, Samson Cantor was president of the Cheese Club, an ADL peer leader, played varsity lacrosse as a defenseman, was a fellow in the Jewish Teen Initiative Peer Leadership, a board member of the Jewish Teen Foundation of Greater Boston, was co-president of WaterAid International, and a part of DECA. Samson will be attending Washington University. Also from Newton South High School is Jordan Cohen. He was treasurer and founding member of the Cheese Club, a catcher for the Newton South Lions baseball team, and plans on going to Lehigh University to study integrated business and engineering. Newton North High School senior Natalie Elder was a part of the Varsity Alpine ski team, sailing team, and a part of Big Brother Big Sister. She plans on studying finance at the University of Colorado in Boulder. From Newton South High School, David Girard was a part of the Newton South High School's track and baseball teams, a part of Ligerbot's vision programming team lead, and on the high honor roll, and plans on enrolling at the College of Computer Science at UMass Amherst. From Prosdor High School at Hebrew College, senior Erez Hatch Tuckman, Tuckman's activities included the basketball team, Model UN, and student council vice president. He was a National Honor Society scholar and student ambassador for his class, introducing new students to the school. Outside of class, he plays bass guitar with Plugged In, is on the USY board of a synagogue, and a volunteer for Sustainable Healthcare for Haiti Incorporated, helping support programs in health care for children in Haiti. He went on a service trip to Israel to help clean up after the fires. He was a camp counselor at the YMCA and will be at Camp Kingswood this summer. He will be attending college in the fall and studying international relations, world history. He is still deciding on which college. 
His twin sister, Ariella Hatukman, also attends Prosder High School at Kibu College, and her activities included props and costumes for theater productions, the Sustainability Club, and the carpentry service trip to Puerto Rico with Garrett Tingle and St. Bernard's Parish. She participated in the Yingsheng Beijing China Exchange her sophomore year. She went on a service trip to Israel to help clean up after the fires. Outside of school, she runs her own needle felting Etsy site, teaches sewing to younger children, and is a volunteer for sustainable health care for Haiti Incorporated, helping support programs and health care for children in Haiti. She was the props manager for a community theater production in Walpool as well. Ariella is planning a gap year which will include four months in Shanghai or Singapore, if that's still possible, and then working on a sailing research ship off the coast of Mexico at the Coral Reef. Then she plans to attend the new school in Manhattan. Newton South High School graduate Jaden Kamenik was involved in the Newton South Little League as an umpire and also played for the Newton Senior League. He plays competitive Smash Brothers regularly and is very active with Temple Israel of Boston's teen programs. Last summer, he participated in the mayor's internship program and worked for Nancy Brown's local organization called Grab Bag. Jane had plans on attending the University of Hartford. Newt North High School graduate Luke Sylvia played basketball and football all four years of his high school career, was a big brother to a second grader, has a 3.6 GPA, and plans on attending the University of New Haven to play football and study sports management. Newton South High School graduate Dylan Suckerman was actively involved in the varsity swim team and plans on attending Eisenberg School of Management at UMass Amherst. Newton South High School graduate Mark Weissman was a trombone player for the Newton South Band and the Newton South Wind Ensemble, co-president of the Boston Children's Chorus with Matthew Walensky, who is also from Newton South and is undecided on college at the moment. Crossing a finish line, high-fiving a teammate, performing in front of an audience, going to an overnight camp, going out to dance and celebrate with your friends. These are all kinds of opportunities that it's easy to take for granted. But without Newton Athletes Unlimited, many people with disabilities would not have those opportunities. I have a lot of friends here, a lot of friends, and people I went to school with, People went to college with, they've seen me as a role model, they've seen me as a leader. Athletes Unlimited is important for Ben because it is a real anchor in his life. He's doing fun things with all of his friends, being independent, you know, like his brother. I think Athletes Unlimited is important to the city of Newton because it speaks to the whole concept of inclusiveness. It says we are not going to separate people because of their skill sets, we're going to unite them. I do swimming, ice skating, horseback riding, track, yoga, camp, you get to see the same faces, or maybe new faces. I think that in any community, people want to feel that they're accepted. And one of the things that happens at Athletes Unlimited is everybody, whether you're a volunteer or whether you're an athlete, you feel 100% accepted for who you are. What it means to my son is that he truly gets to live his life without limits. Everybody works together as a team. There's no I in team. I want my teammates to perform their absolute best. The high fives, the hugs, uh, the connection that is so clearly there, that is so powerful. I've recently limited. It's been a big part of my life. You know, it's been empowering, inclusive, proud, game changer. I'm very happy. provides the vision, provides the support that uh, our city needs to put on world-class activities for individuals with disabilities. I love Athletes Unlimited because it helps me to live a long, healthy life.
On Monday evening at the American Legion post 440, there was an unveiling of a special new monument dedicated to the brave men and women who have fought the war on terror since 9-11. The people of the Newton 9-11 Memorial Committee originally came up with the idea for this new monument and together with the Sons of the American Legion made it happen to create this beautiful new memorial. We have two very active groups in Newton led by two ladies who are very strong uh, and very dedicated to doing what's right. Names of Sandy uh, Young and Virginia Gardner. And uh, we worked together to get this. Uh, they had the idea, quite frankly, and the concept brought us in. We helped shape it a little bit, and we also provided the, the, the land for it to be uh, placed on. That's how it came about. I thought it would be a good idea, and uh, Ginny and I discussed it. And we thought it would be a good idea, and we talked to Nick about it, and the three of us formed our own little committee to, about getting it done. And it's for uh, men, men and women who have served since 2001, um, the ones that are still living and the ones that are deceased. It's for both. And um, we just want to show how much we appreciate all they're doing to keep us safe. And now this global war on terror that has gone on for almost 20 years, Children that never knew about 9-11 are serving in our military and fighting to keep us safe so we can have things like this. We can feel safe gathering here in front of the stone. When I heard taps and saw Mike Mazzola looking at the flag, standing at attention, I thought this is what it's all about, respecting, honoring, and loving our military and our first responders. It went well. Um, it was short, it was sweet, it was right to the point. Um, the remarks by the two ladies were outstanding. Uh, Sandy and the benediction in Virginia with her, um, with her soliloquy there. So it was good. It was a great team effort, quite frankly. Uh, teaming up with these two ladies is always a positive outcome. It's important we never forget that awful day in history. And now this new monument will remind all of us of the men and women who have and still are fighting the war on terror. Ryan Caveney, Newton News, No Nantum. Newton News was brought to you in part by The Village Bank. Your village, your bank. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward-facing or rear-facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing, and it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Dinner at my house. Delicious, jarred, sauce, time to recycle. Bam. Oh no, Dana! Where'd you come from? <laughs> I'm your recycling person. Oh gosh, it's gotta be clean. What? You can't reset. Oh no, Dana, you're putting it all in a plastic bag. Yes, clean cardboard. Oh, look at your, oh, you've got all this squishy plastic. You know what it does? What? It jams up all the machines. How about this stuff? Can't go in your recycling. This you can take back to your grocery store, but not in your green cart. How about when I put the recyclables in? Absolutely not. No plastic bags. Yes, Something that's like the way that? to do that. Clean it and don't do the plastic bags. Thanks, everybody.